Let's say I have a Rails app here for sending out newsletters to subscribers. And you can see a list of newsletters here, and to send one out, I just click on Deliver. But notice that this request takes a while to process. And this is bad because while this uh, Rails instance is processing this request, it is unable to accept any other requests during this time. There we go, it finally, finally delivered, and it says it's delivered here. Now whenever you're faced with a long running request like this, you should consider moving it into a background process. So that way the request returns instantly, but the long running task happens in the background afterwards. Now there are many ways to handle background jobs in Rails, but still one of the easiest to set up and use is delayed job. Uh, this allows you to use the same backend database so you don't have to set up anything else extra. And it offers a nice interface where you just call a method through the delay method to move it off into the background. Let me show you how to use it in this app here. To get started, go into the gem file of your app and then add the delayed job active record gem here. Uh, and then run the bundle command to install it. Now this assumes you want to use an active record database to handle the job queue. Now delayed job supports other backends as well, such as data mapper and mongoid, so be sure to check out the wiki documentation for more details on those. Now to finish setting up delayed job, we need to run a generator called delayed job active record. And this will create a new migration for generating a table to handle the job queue. So run the rakedb migrate after this to create that table. And then to start up delayed job, there's a rake task provided called jobs work, and that will start up a background process to handle the jobs in that delayed jobs table. So now that we have delayed job set up, we need to modify our Rails app so that when we click on this deliver link here, it does that long running process in the background. Now when you click on that deliver link, it's going to trigger this deliver action inside of the newsletters controller I have set up here. And notice I'm simulating a long delivery by sleeping for 10 seconds here, just so we can see the effect. And the first step is to move whatever is taking so long out of the controller and into a separate method, usually inside of the model. So I'm thinking it would be nice if there was just this deliver method on our model that we can use to call directly like this. So that means inside of the newsletter model here, I'll make this deliver method and just paste in the same thing that I was doing inside of the controller, except modify this slightly so it's working on this newsletter instance. So now that we move the long running task into its own method, it's very easy to pass us to the background process by calling delay through this. So this way it will add a new record to the delayed jobs table, telling it to call this method on this model here. And while I'm at it, let me update this notice here saying delivering newsletter because it's in the process of being delivered. Now we can try this out in our application by clicking on deliver here, and notice that we get the response back immediately saying delivered newsletter, but it doesn't say it has been delivered yet. So I'll just hit reload here. I'll probably need to hit reload a few times because it takes 10 seconds for it to process it. But there we go, the background process picked it up, and now it has been delivered. Now it's important to know that the way delayed job works is that it stores the objects in the database. So that means any object that you call delay on, as well as any arguments that you use in your method call are going to be, need to be serialized into YAML format in the database for it to use in the background. Generally, this isn't too much of an issue, but it's my preference to stick to simpler objects when working with delayed job. For example, instead of using a full newsletter instance here, we can just switch to using a newsletter class and then passing the newsletter ID parameter into it directly like this. So that way we're calling delay on the class instead of an instance and then just passing a simple object which is the ID into it. And then inside of the newsletter model we can make that class method called deliver that accepts that ID and we can find the record for that and then call deliver on it. That way it's doing the same thing that it did in the controller. It's not a whole lot of code to add, but it makes the uh, job queue quite a bit simpler. Now, delay job supports a number of neat options on this delay method. Here are a few of them. One is a queue option, which you can use to specify a named queue. So you can say maybe the newsletter queue, and that way you can have different workers working on different queues. Another option is the priority option, and it defaults to zero. So if you set a higher priority, it will be uh, processed first, or you can set a negative number to be a lower priority to be processed uh, later. And you can also have a run at option to specify when you want this job to run at some point in the future. So for example, you can say five minutes from now, and that way it won't run until that run at time. 
Now, delay job also supports many different ways for adding jobs to the queue. The delay method that I've shown you so far is my preferred approach and should work great for most situations. Uh, here are some other alternatives though. One is to call handle asynchronously in a class and pass it the name of a method. And then every time that method is called, it will uh, use delayed job on that method. Another approach is called a custom job. And that is where you create your own custom class for the job with a perform method. And then you can add that manually to the job by calling in queue with it. Now this uh, gives you a little bit more control, but usually isn't necessary. Now delayed job also has support for failure. For example, let's say an exception is raised while the job is processing. In this case, what it's going to do is re-trigger the job at a later point. Now you have to be careful though, because in certain situations, this might cause issues. For example, in our case where we're sending out a newsletter, we don't want to re-deliver this newsletter to those that we've already sent it to. So you have to watch out and always ask yourself what happens if this method is called again. So you would need to make sure to keep track of which recipients you've already delivered it to and not send it to them again. Now this behavior can be configured by creating an initializer file and placing some settings inside of there. So let's make a new initializer file called deladedjobconfig.rb. And here you can set options on the delayed worker such as max attempts. And here you might wanna set it to maybe five to only retry five times. I think the default is 20 or so. One option that's a good idea to set is the delay jobs option and set it to if the Rails environment is not the test environment. So that way this will disable delay job in the test environment and you, it will basically call the methods directly instead of moving them off to a background process. Now a word about using delayed job in production. So far we've been starting delayed job with the jobs work rake task, but in production it's suggested that you use the script provided under the script directory called delayed job. And you can start this up and say something like start, and that will start up a daemon process for delayed job. But here we're going to get an exception because this requires that we add the daemons gem to our gem file. So going to the gem file, you can add the uh, daemons gem here and then run the bundle command to install it. And then once that's done, you can try running the delayed job script again saying start and it should automatically start it up as a demonized process like that. And then you can pass in stop here to uh, stop the daemon as well. Now to get this working with Capistrano, I recommend you check out the wiki page here and notice that there are some recipes provided. You can just require the delayed recipes here and that way you can add various tasks into your deployment for starting and stopping the delayed jobs. And finally, if you want a way to monitor the job queue through a web interface, check out the delayed job web gem. It's very simple to use. All you have to do is add the gem to your gem file and add a line to your routes. And instantly you have a nice web interface for managing your job queue very much like the rescue web. Well, that's it for this episode on delayed job. It provides an easy way to move long requests into the background so they respond instantly. Now, delayed job isn't a perfect fit for every situation, so be certain to also check out the other options available such as Rescue and Beanstalk and more. Uh, I've done episodes on those in the past as well. Well, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful.